This is video five of a six video series on how to create amazing images. Photography in reality is all about seeing and capturing light. If you're a beginner photographer, you're probably not even paying attention to the light around you and these concepts of light. But as you move down the path of becoming a seasoned photographer, you'll not only be seeing the light, you'll be learning how to capture the light in interesting and dynamic ways. In this video, we'll be discussing two of the four basic characteristics of light, quality and direction. Quality of light has to do with how hard or soft it is, or how warm or cool it is. And the direction of light has to do with the position of the light source in the scene. So let's talk about quality of light. Quality of light is defined by the size of the light source relative to the subject. Hard light produces harsh, hard-edged shadows. Hard lighting occurs when you have a concentrated light source, again, like a flashlight or a spotlight or headlights on a car. In this image of a dog on a, a bright evening, this is an example of some harsh lighting. You see that shadow over to the left-hand side. The sun is obviously in the right-hand side of, of the poor dog, uh, but uh, it makes for an interesting effect. Sometimes shadows are really interesting, especially imagine the mountain scene where the sun's coming down, you have these great shadows across the scene. When you're in a condition of soft lighting, there's oftentimes no shadows at all or very minimal shadows and that's what you want again in most portrait type situations. This is a portrait of a family friend where it's taken in a time of day where there was still direct light but it was behind her and we used a reflector in front of her to fill her face so now you see the lighting around her head. It's a beautiful uh, hair lighting or that heavenly glow behind her, but then her face is just perfectly uh, lit in front of her. And that's a, a great example of still soft lighting in a relatively harsh condition. Soft lighting sometimes isn't just great for portraits. You can imagine a walk in the woods where the trees are covering you and that produces a nice soft lighting effect where you still might see a glimmer of the sun shining through the trees or the canopy or something. So you get some interesting light, but it's still in general pretty shadowed and pretty soft. Keep in mind, one form of lighting isn't necessarily better than any other form of lighting. The real point here is pay attention to your lighting and pay attention to the type of shot you're trying to capture and go find the lighting that's appropriate for that scene. So when we're talking about the quality of light, we also need to talk about the color temperature. Color temperature is an indication of if your light source is a warm light, kind of a yellow tone, or cold light, which is a bluish tone. We can break all this down technically, but we'll save it for another lesson down the road. Here's an example of cold light. You may have seen this image before. It's uh, from Minneapolis. It's during the blue hour. So the sun has already come down. The whole sky turns blue. There's still light in the sky, so it's not pitch black. The lights of the city have come up, so you have gold and all kinds of colors throughout the city, but you still have that overarching blue cold tone to the image. An example of warm light would be the 4th Presbyterian Church of Chicago. Notice how golden that is. That's because we took that image with the existing light in that building, that the existing light is by nature very warm, very golden, and it gives such a warm hue to that uh, structure. It really is enchanting, in my opinion. Now we're gonna talk about direction of light. Direction of light can completely change the mood of an image, and you need to pay attention to that. A front lit subject tends to be the easiest to shoot. The light source is straight in front. The subject is evenly illuminated. Because of this, front lit subjects tend to be the easiest to photograph. On the flip side, such lighting isn't as dramatic, and your images can turn out more flat, less interesting. Side light offers much more depth and complexity to your image. Why do you think we're using side light right now? In this example of Bar Harbor in the morning, we have this sailboat uh, and the scene in front where uh, the sun is coming up from the right-hand side and you see those long, dramatic shadows. Side light can add drama and pizzazz to your image. Backlight can be exceedingly complex for the beginner photographer, but it's certainly worth it. Backlighting is my favorite type as a landscape photographer. Backlighting can be used to create a variety of effects. Two of these are silhouettes, and lens flares. In this image of the graveyard, this is a perfect example of a silhouette. To set this up, you have your bright light behind your main subject, the interesting headstones in front, and they're completely silhouetted, they're just dark. 
So you end up metering for the light in the background. You don't want the, the background light to be all blown out. You actually want light that you can see or some detail in that background. And what that'll do is it'll force your foreground to be all dark. So that's a quick little technique that you'll want to learn. Whenever you're shooting directly into the light, uh, you will oftentimes get a lens flare. Sometimes that's a, that's a negative thing. It takes up too much of your image. It, it overwhelms the image, but sometimes it's really beautiful and really powerful. People respond strongly to lens flares. They just love them. This is an image taken at Acadia National Park in Bar Harbor, Maine, the top of Cadillac Mountain. And uh, it was at sunset, and I wanted a combination of details in the foreground, so I didn't want it completely silhouetted, but I also wanted that lens fl flare, and I wanted that great sunset. So I pulled all those things together. So whether you're working with side light, front light, back light, the direction of light is incredibly important for your images. So work on both understanding how to manage it and when you would want to use it. I hope you've been able to see the magic that can be created when you understand these characteristics of light. With some practice, you'll be able to master these techniques and produce some amazing results of your own. If you like this video and any of our other videos, be sure to subscribe to our channel, leave a comment, share it with your friends, and post it on your social media. Be sure to catch our next video, part two of lighting. And until next time, get out and capture the adventure.